Hi, good morning everyone. It's uh, Monday the 19th of October uh, 2020 and it's just gone 10 a.m. Uh, my name's Councillor Dean uh, and I'm the chair for this morning's uh, committee. Uh, joining me are my two fellow councillors, uh, Councillor uh, Flitcroft and Councillor Morris. Um, they'll be making a decision with me uh, once we've uh, heard what we've got to, uh, once we've been through the procedure. Um, and uh, we also have uh, Mrs. Klein, who's our licensing officer today. And we're joined uh, from committee admin by uh, Mr. Ian Mulholland. And from uh, legal services, we have Linda Bainbridge uh, joining us today, just in case we need any uh, legal legal advice uh, during the procedure. Um, and so we'll, st we'll start the meeting off. I believe we've got two other people that are joining us um, and I'll, I'll introduce you in a, in a minute. But uh, are, there, are there any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest. So I'll just explain the procedure to you. We have Mr. Taylor and uh, Miss Nichols uh, that are joining us uh, on behalf of the applicant. And uh, the, pr the procedure, um, I'll just talk talk you through that very briefly. So first of all, uh, we've received the bundle uh, a number of days ago, and uh, can everybody confirm uh, that they've uh, received and read the details in the bundle? Yes, Chair. Yeah, Chair. Thank you. Um, so what, once, uh, so as I said, we've had a look through the bundle. Uh, we'll ask and the licensing officer if there's anything in addition, first of all, that they want to add. Uh, once we've done that, uh, we'll all have an opportunity, that's the members and um, other present parties, will have an opportunity to ask questions of the licensing officer. Once that's been done, then the licensing applicant will get a chance to put their case forward. Uh, once they've done that, again, will the members and the licensing officer uh, will have an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Uh, if there are any other parties present that want to make representation will then be given an opportunity. But at this stage, I can't see anybody else that's joined us. So um, having done that, then both parties will get an opportunity to summarise. Uh, once that's been done, then the subcommittee will retire um, to make a decision and um, the decision will be made in private, but uh, the applicant uh, will receive a letter with confirmation of the decision that's been made. If the decision's gone in their favour, that's fine. If it hasn't, then they've got an opportunity to apply to the magistrate's court, as will be detailed um, in the letter. So um, we'll now move over to uh, the first uh, speaker, which will be the licensing officer, Mrs. Klein. Is there anything you would like to add in addition to uh, what's already in the bundle? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Everything's been submitted prior to the meeting. Thank you. Right. Are there any questions for the licensing officer from members? No. No, I don't have any. That's fine. Uh, does the applicant have any questions for the licensing officer? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Right, so it's over to you now, Mr. Taylor and Ms. Nichols, to give um, your um, uh, your presentation on your application. Uh, thank you very much indeed. So I'll take this very um, uh, as quickly as I possibly can, but, uh, but I do need to do it justice. Um, I'm a solicitor for Morrison's. Uh, I've got Mrs. Nichols with me. She is. Uh, Morrison's National Licensing Manager and can ask you and uh, answer any questions on policies, procedures or anything like that. Um, uh, first things first, very grateful for Mrs. Klein uh, for the report. Um, what I'll do, if I may, is I'll just set the backdrop to this application, then deal with it in three parts. Um, the backdrop is very, very straightforward. We're applying for a premises license to allow us the flexibility of 24 hour opening and late night refreshments from 2300 uh, to, to five o'clock in the morning. And we can open these hours right now. So there's no planning reason, no reason at all why this petrol filling station cannot open 24 hours at the moment. So effectively, we're just saying, can we add to the products that we already uh, do and can sell 
uh, the ability to sell alcohol or a hot coffee. So there is the backdrop. Uh, and the three parts to the application are these. Uh, number one, the applicant and the reasons for the application. Number two, what we do to promote the licensing objectives. And number three, just to comment on some issues raised in the, in the single uh, household letter of representation. So starting at the beginning then, uh, the applicant and the reason for the application. Um, well, the applicant is Morrison's. Um, the, uh, the company, I'm sure, is well known to, to the committee. 500-ish uh, 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 stores uh, uh, and just short of 100 uh, filling stations, all with Licensing Act 2003 premises licences. Now, the company is uh, one of the best operators, I would say, uh, as far as supermarkets are concerned. We've acted for Morrison's now since conversion uh, and ever since Licensing Act 2003 has been in force. So that's 16 years now, short of a month. The company has never been the subject of review proceedings under Licence Act 2003 and has never been the subject of any prosecution under that Act as well. And that's due to Mrs Nichols' policies and procedures. And what she will tell you if she's asked is that she guards her licences very, very fiercely indeed. So that's Morrison's. Uh, the reasons for the application are these. Since coronavirus hit, Morrison's has seen a significant increase in people shopping for groceries in their filling stations. What we believe is happening is that people want to shop in a smaller uh, environment, uh, and especially where they don't need a big shop, you know, where people are rushing in for you know, one, two, three items, they know that they can get them in the filling station and that's what's, well, that's what's happening now. So that's what we've seen, that's the reason for the application. I now need to tell you what Morrison's does to promote the licensing objectives. Well, uh, the first thing we do is we work very, very hard with the police. Uh, we have ex extremely good uh, relations with the police. Uh, we know exactly what's happening. We liaise with the police when there was an issue of antisocial behaviour around the library. Um, Morrison's worked very hard with the police, even deploying one of its own CCTV vans to, um, to assist the police in sorting that out. So we work with the police. We have a uh, full digital CCTV system, images retained for 28 days, made av available to officers of the police or responsible authorities on request. We have a screen count, a screened counter. There are panic buttons with direct links to the store. Um, uh, all staff in the petrol stations whose job involves alcohol sales are, are personal license holders. So way beyond the requirements of the, of the Act but we want to be very, very sure that the, the satellite operation that is the petrol filling station uh, runs absolutely as clockwork. So everybody selling alcohol in there is a personal license holder. And what we don't ever do is single man those stores. So there's never uh, fewer than two people rotated on at a time. They're trained. That training is refreshed regularly. We operate Challenge 25. There is an electronic refusals log. We engage independent test purchasers to uh, test the quality of our policies and procedures. All spirits and high value uh, items are displayed behind the counter. We don't sell in the petrol filling stations, uh, single cans uh, of uh, beers or ciders, and we don't sell strong white ciders at all, the sort of thing that might appeal to, to, to children or, or to street drinkers. So that's what we do. Uh, and the result of all of that is, as I've said, that we've never faced any review at all. So turning to my third point, and I know I'm racing through this, uh, please, please don't think that I'm not taking this as seriously as it needs to be. Uh, the third point was just to deal with some issues raised uh, in the letter of representation. And again, the first point to make about this is we can already open 24 hours. And the question that I'll ask you right at the end is, will the sale of an odd bottle of wine or a pack of beers, along with any other groceries that we're selling, make any difference at all? And I will, of course, respect that it won't. So we've seen the representation of Emily and Luke Berry. They live um, at, uh, on Linwood Grove. And you'll know, you'll, see, you'll have seen in uh, page six, there's some photographs on, and maps. Uh, and Linwood Grove uh, runs from the N and the G down from Longside Bowling Club. 
and it won't have escaped the committee's uh, notice that they are the only people to object. None of their neighbours have objected, and of course, none of the responsible authorities have objected. And the first thing that they raise in their identical letter of representation is the tannoy. Well, the tannoy is absolutely nothing to do with alcohol sales. That's used to talk to people who are having difficulty with the petrol pumps. Um, what I can tell you uh, is that we've made some investigations and it has never been the subject of any complaint. But now that we know that Mr. and Mrs. Berry, I'm assuming they're Mr. and Mrs. Berry, uh, given that they've got a young baby, uh, have complained, we will talk to the store about it. We'll make sure that it's not used uh, uh, later into the evening. Uh, Antisocial behaviour, I've already mentioned, it's nothing to do with uh, Morrison's. It's nothing to do with Mount Morrison's petrol station. It's unfortunately a, a, a societal thing. Uh, and as I said, there were there was an issue in the summer, I understand, of youngsters hanging around the library. Uh, Morrison's worked with the police and it's now not a problem at all. What we know is it certainly wasn't a problem uh, uh, due to Morrison selling alcohol and it won't be as far as uh, this application is concerned. So leaving you with this, um, I suppose the uh, objector, um, Mrs. Berry says, you know, well, you know, it might it might be a problem of antisocial behaviour. Well, that's not a concern that shared shared by the police, uh, with whom we work very very hard indeed. We need to. Um, so, members of the committee, uh, there it is. Um, I'm sorry you can't see me. <laughs> uh, I hadn't appreciated this was a telephone um, uh, interview uh, hearing, so I put a suit on specially. Uh, first time for a good while. Um, but any questions that you have for either Mrs. Nichols or I, we're, we're only too happy to help. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm just concerned that you didn't hear me. All right, no, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you for that representation. Uh, I have um, a question from Councillor Flitcroft. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Taylor, in, very early on in, in your um, presentation, you said that the petrol station can operate for 24 hours as it is now. Does it operate at 24 hours? Uh, no, it doesn't. And what I also said is we're seeking the flexibility to be open 24 hours uh, as, as well. The current petrol filling station hours are 6 a.m to 10.30 Mondays to Saturdays, uh, 8 to 8 uh, on Sundays uh, and historically in the run up to Christmas we've traded a uh, longer hours than that, certainly into the later evening. Okay, thank you. Um, perhaps Mrs Nichols could just confirm that the proposal, irrespective of, the, of this application, is that the petrol station will, tr uh, will trade after midnight in the run up to Christmas? Mrs Nichols? Yes, that, yep, that's correct. Uh, and, and, and thereafter, Mrs. Nichols, it's, it, it's about the flexibility to uh, to cater to customer demand. Yes, okay. that's right. As um, as coronavirus and COVID are changing shopping habits, it, it gives us the flexibility to um, to let people in um, at different times when it's less busy. Okay, thank you. Ian, it's John. We seem to have just lost uh, Councillor Dean. Right, I'll I'll, I'll re-request him. He has just left the meeting, yes. Oh, he's coming back now. Oh, Councillor Dean, you're back. I'm sorry about that. That was my uh, Wi-Fi signal that went down then. I do apologise. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, can. we can see yeah. and hear you. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Councillor Fritcock, you were asking a question. Did you did you get the answer to that? I did. Yes, thank you. Right. Um, do we do we have any other uh, questions from councillors yes. or officers? Uh, could I ask a question? Of course you can. Yeah, Councillor Morris. Yeah, it's on the same theme as Councillor Fritcock. So, if this license was granted for the 24 hours, you would use it flexible. Is that the idea? Uh, so, so sorry, Councillor, you just broke up um, as you finished your question. I'm just saying, if you get this 
for 24 hours, will you use it flexible like yes. you did yes. the petrol? Is that the idea? That's exactly the idea. Yes, the, 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 the idea of this is to be able to sell the full product range whilst we're open as opposed to uh, knocking uh, certain things off it. So it's, it's flexibility, absolutely right. Right, thank you. Can I ask a question of the officer, please, um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Klein? Yes, Chair. Yeah, I think uh, the uh, applicant did mention it, but can you just confirm that none of the uh, responsible authorities have made representation? No, the only responses we had were from the uh, two residents. We've not had anything from a responsible authority. Right, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'd like to ask you a question around yes. the uh, the antisocial behaviour element. Um, as you know, that's one of the stores that uh, does has, or has attracted uh, antisocial behaviour in the past. I think a lot of it, uh, because we work with the police on it, a lot of it has been to do with the Wi-Fi that's provided. Uh, so children, kids, young people tend to hang around uh, that area for that uh, later on in the evenings. But is there any other, do you know, from your experience of some of the other stores that you and Mrs. Uh, Nichols have uh, dealt with, um, when when uh, when we have this example of stations selling alcohol um, later on in the evening, does it attract more antisocial behaviour? Yes, of course. Yeah, in our experience, that's not the case. What you normally find, um, Chair, is that you will have um, people that are coming off shift that want to get the bread, the milk, a bottle of wine, a ready meal for later on in the day. What we find is a petrol filling station predominantly is a drive on to um, location. It is very rare you do see the walk on um, people onto the forecourt because it's a little bit more dangerous with cars being there. So um, in our experience of having over 100 petrol filling station licenses, um, we don't have any antisocial behaviour. I'd just like to reiterate as well, um, just because the petrol filling station um, will be open 24 hours, the colleagues are not left on their own. So there is a manager in store um, at all times. They have direct links to that manager. who will be able to come over and give support where needed. Well, thank you for that. So do we have any further questions from councillors? No, I'm fine, thank you. Right, can I ask uh, both parties, the licensing officer to summarise first, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I have nothing further to add. Of course, this is a, an application for the grant of a premises licence you're considering today, uh, and I have no further information to add to that. Thank you, Mrs. Klein. Uh, Mr. Taylor or Mrs. Nichols, do you have anything further to summarise on? I will just very briefly on the basis of, uh, of your policy, sir, if I may. Um, I started off by saying, you know, the backdrop against the, uh, to this is that there's no representation from any of the responsible authorities. Now, as far as, you, as, as, uh, as, far as we all know, the Section 182 Home Office guidance says that they're the experts in their particular field. So as far as this application is concerned, the experts in crime and disorder, antisocial behaviour, the police don't oppose the application. Those about noise, environmental health, don't oppose it. Children's safeguarding, they don't oppose it. The only representation we've got is a, a cut and pasted letter twice. I don't criticise anybody for that, but it's a single household and it has to uh, bear some weight that nobody else is uh, complaining about this at all. Turning to your policy, uh, paragraph 1.48, it says this, unless there are good reasons to the contrary on the grounds of public order or crime prevention, shops, stores and supermarkets that sell alcohol will be permitted to do so during the times that they would ordinarily sell other goods. It would be for interested persons or the responsible authorities to prove why this should not be so, so it should not be so in any particular case. So is there any proof of any good reason? Well, why Morrisons can't sell a bottle of wine uh, or a beer along with everything else that it's going to send. Well, there's nothing from the responsible authorities at all. What we've got, there's nothing even from local residents saying this will be a problem. What we've got is uh, a household saying it might be. 
Uh, and, and of course, we know that we need to uh, determine applications on the basis of evidence. And what might happen it is never going to be uh, evidence at all. And so in my respectful submission, uh, members of the committee, the, the correct thing to do here is to grant the license with the conditions that we've offered and, uh, and, and allow Morrison's just to sell that pack of beer when it's open at the petrol filling station. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. So the procedure now is that we are going to retire to make a decision. So in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to hang up. However, if you could keep yourself available um, over the next few minutes, just in case we need to get back to you with any queries if necessary. Yes, of course. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. So Mr. Taylor and uh, Mrs. Nichols, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. OK, thank you. if you could both now leave the meeting, please. Thank you very so just, much. Just hang up the thank telephone. You. Just hang up, yes, please. Thank you. And you'll call me if there's a question. If there's any any clarification needed, yes. Lovely. Thank you very much, uh, committee members. Thank you very much indeed. And John, could you end the live event?